Hey everyone, Raphael here at Taming the Orchid. Today I thought I would do um, a quick follow-up video um, with further notes on how I grow and bloom Cattleya walkeriana. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short, under five minutes. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video today is because I am getting so many messages on social media, especially on Instagram, regarding Cattleya walkeriana and how I am successful at blooming it. This is the third time my plant has bloomed this year. And uh, a lot of people want to know what exactly I'm doing and stuff. So I thought I'd do a follow-up um, video and uh, just give more details on what I do. So this is my Cattleya Wacriana semi-alba. Um, quick background. Um, I've been growing Wacriana and Nobiliar. The culture is almost the same for both. Um, I've been growing them for about 20 years. I used to have a lot of them. I only have one Wacriana now. I'll probably get some more, but I have a lot of experience with them and I feel very comfortable in growing and blooming them. So hopefully I can pass those little tips on to you. Um, so the first thing is um, a little background on Cattleya Wacriana. In its natural environment, it is um, grows in a very um, harsh environment so where half the year it um, and I wouldn't even say half the year but a portion of the year it rains a lot and for a large portion of the year it is very dry and harsh so the plant has to um, save a lot of energy so I'll show you here if you go and look at this Wacriana my plant here so this is a normal growth here and you can see it produces a leaf. So in nature, um, the Wacriana would produce this leaf, um, I believe, during the rainy season. So it produces a leaf and it produces these leaves to essentially keep the plant going and um, provide a sort of solar panel that will allow the plant to photosynthesize and continue living, basically. So as the dry season approaches, the plant starts to bloom. And what happens with Cattleya Wacriana is it will produce this modified growth here you can see which is like a modified pseudo bulb and in the wild in its natural habitat there is usually no leaf on this because the plant has to conserve energy and the plant is very smart so it doesn't bother um, to produce a leaf on this modified growth here but in cultivation because we don't really have a dry season and I'm watering all the time they will produce a modified leaf and they will bloom on a growth with a modified leaf and you can see that here so that's completely normal so um, yeah, you can see if you look at the plants, uh, I, these are the original pseudobulbs and I've only had this since June 2018 and it's grown basically all of this and it's bloomed this year already three times and this is the third bloom and you can see the blooms are growing on a modified growth. There's one growth there, there's another growth in here and it's essentially got another, actually another lead which didn't bloom. So if that had bloomed, I probably would have had close to 10 blooms, but I got five blooms this time, which is really great. So it just keeps on increasing in blooms. Um, and essentially what I do with this is um, I give it tons and tons of light. It grows, uh, here's my LED light and um, it grows very close to the LED light. It's a thousand watts. It doesn't seem to mind. It gets very direct light all the time, 14 hours a day. So that contributes largely in part to the success of me growing it. Um, I have found Cattleya Wacariana and Cattleya nobilior. Um, they love a lot, a lot of light, like even direct sun, but with a lot of air movement. So a lot of people will say, well, my plant got burned. Okay, so I gotta let you know that when sunburn is not an actual thing, the reason that the leaves get burned is because there's a lack of air circulation. So there's a heat buildup. Sun doesn't actually burn the leaves. Um, what happens when they get excessive light, the leaves will turn yellow and they'll stop photosynthesizing. But um, sunburn is actually from heat buildup. So you gotta keep a lot of air circulation, which I do in my tent and um, yeah, so that's basically it. So what I do every day is I water this every single day. And this is growing. I have found Cattleya Wacariana um, just hates being in media. And um, I see people growing their plants in media and uh, they're soaked all the time. And the plants will either like grow a lot of leaves and not bloom or they'll just basically not do very much. So I have found over the years, when I started growing these about 20 years ago, I had them potted and then eventually I discovered, because I was friends with a really good grower of Cattleya Wacariana, and I learned a lot from him, and uh, I discovered that they love to be mounted, or they love to be potted with no media in them. So you can see in my pot here, there's really no media in there. There's just a tiny bit of moss from way, way back when, but there's nothing. It's just growing on the outside of the pot here. Uh, let's see if I can show you. The other side of the pot here it's growing all around the pot um, 
and it's growing a lot of new roots right now too and it's growing outside of the pot um, I'm not even going to repot this what I'm going to do eventually is just have this part here um, I'm going to try to sort of get it growing in the next growth when the roots come out I'm going to get this growing onto a mount and eventually cut this and provide a new plant to just have this one sprout again but um, yeah I just let them do their thing they grow in the pot like this and uh, they're very very happy I water this every single day like I totally soak it uh, some days when it's taking a brief break when it's not actually growing which is very brief in my sun, in my grow tent here I actually will um, just spray it but it gets sprayed or watered every single day there's without doubt and um, I actually fertilize it. I'll just show you one second here. I actually fertilize every day at um, about 50 parts per million with this stuff. Jack's 15520 and it has um, calcium and magnesium in it and um, it's really really good stuff and every once in a while I will just give it also a really good soaking with CalMag and um, I water with um, I'm actually watering with tap water here because in New York City we have really great tap water and so I just draw that and I let that sit out overnight or a few days and then I use that. I don't have any problems and uh, yeah that's basically my tips for how I bloom Cattleya Walkeriana. Like I said this one has bloomed for me three times already this year. Um, I give it a lot of light. Look at the, fl uh, the blushing on this and the um the flaring just amazing and the scent on this is just phenomenal like i've indicated before so i hope that helps you i hope you'll try out cattleya wakariana it's not that hard if you give it what it needs i always say the orchids thrive when we give them what they need they're not difficult plants as long as we give them exactly what they need they thrive and reward us with wonderful bloom so cattleya wakariana is just such a nice cattleya species because it's very compact and uh it has these really nice flowers and depending on the particular clone like this semi alba has such big flowers they're like you can see my hand here and the flowers are quite large and so fragrant and they just smell divine and the coloring is beautiful so i hope you'll try a cattleya wakariana and i hope you ha if you have existing cattleya wakariana this will help you um, grow them better and bloom them better and um, i want to thank you for watching and uh, happy growing to you